Welcome to the Saturday edition of Box Seat. I'm Adam McGrath and we're taking a look at Ascot on Kingston Town weekend. Some great depth here of the nine races and hopefully we can find you a couple of winners throughout the card. Let's take a look at the conditions that we are going to be faced with. The movable rail is out six metres. We're running on a good three now. There is some rain expected so do make sure you have a look at Twitter at Perth Racing and keep up to date with all of the weather in Perth as well because that can make a difference come later on in this race card as well. Let's get straight into it. Race one, it is the listed Aquanita Stakes, a very interesting race as well, and the replay that we are going to take a look at is the last start winner from the Neville Parnham Stable, Fremond into the turn from light up the sky Fremont still keeps coming though it's Fremont light up the sky going to shark mouth behind them penalty point glitter bell but Fremont with 150 still left to go the leader snuck a length and a half in front of light up the sky they're going to battle it out Fremont he's been off the track all the way but too good for them Fremont goes on to beat light up the sky it's a really good performance here by Fremont just showed a little bit the start before in the group two guineas and Neville Parnham has always had a really high opinion of this galloper but it's just taking a lot of time to build back into that form that we saw as an early two-year-old. As I said, the Group 2 Guineas run was good. The replay that you saw there was good considering the race didn't go to plan as well. And stepping up to the 1800 metres, I do see as a positive for Fremont and it can certainly play a part in this race. The best of the Neville Parnham runners, though, I think is number three, George and Ernie, in this race. Stephen Parnham to ride barrier five with the 55 kilos. Comes out of the group two guineas as well. Finished four and a half lengths behind Man Booker. Was actually beaten, uh, were just beat from on, on that occasion. But I thought the run was much better. Attacked the line strongly. And I really think George and Ernie can play a part in this race as well with its turn of foot, especially if it's run to suit. So out of the Neville Parnham runners, that's the way that I'm leaning at the moment. The clear on top selection, though, for mine is number six, Arcadia dream for Grant Williams. William Pike to ride from Barrier 3 in the Cerise and White Colours. I think this filly is completely underrated at the moment. That's all because of Perfect Reflection. If Perfect Reflection isn't in the race and William Pike had to row this filly on more occasions, I think we'd be looking at a, a listed winner and who knows, possibly even a group winner as well, the way this horse has been going. She's absolutely flying. She's got plenty of class. I think the form lines behind Perfect Reflection and Blackwood hold up. I think from Barrier 3 with 53 kilos, she is the better of the card. You won't be getting much of a prize but I find it very hard to see how she could lose this race. Let's take a look at race number one. It is Australia race number two. I'm going to be tipping number six, Arcadia Dream. From number three, George and Ernie. Number one, Fremont. And number seven, Secret Dow. Race two at Ascot's Australia. Race number four for our Singapore viewers. It's the Group 3 Sir Ernest Lestier Classic over the 1,400 metres. A lot of these runners coming from the listed Placid Arc. And that is the replay that we're going to take a look at now because Let It Slip was too good in the end. It managed to get the victory ridden by Peter Hall. And we'll take a look at that replay now. It slipped last at the top of the home straight. Over on the inside, Delicate Miss first to turn. Jing Tang pounced on it. Mystic Maid. Here comes the baldy face, Yoshi Noxious. And Let It Slip down the outside with the runner's will. Further back, Celebrity Dream. 100 to go. Let It Slip and Yoshi Noxious coming away on the inside. Mystic Maid, but Let It Slip draws clear. And it's Let It Slip in the Placid Arc. One from Yoshi. She has a lot of class about her, this filly, and she certainly showed it in her past three starts. A winner of two from her past three. One over the 1,000 metres, and then the replay that you saw there as well. Well, prior to that, she'd just been running into some pretty good fields and just falling short, but she seems to have found that turn of foot late and the way to win races as well. And with the speed that's still expected in this race, I think it's going to set up perfectly for Let It Slip again. The 1,400 metres, I don't see as being an issue. I always thought this horse wanted 12 to 14, so you can tick the box there. Peter Hall to ride, the 54 and a half kilos. As I mentioned with the speed, she should get a brilliant run, and I still think that she is the one to beat in this race. The horse that finished second in that replay was number three, Yoshi Noxious. Now, Brad Parnham will take the ride with Lucy Warwick being suspended. And it was another really good run as well. If you go back to the start before, was caught wide throughout and was still able to win on that occasion by a half length over Pinzu. Last start, didn't have the greatest run as well, but still ran on strongly to finish a length behind, let it slip. I think those form lines are, are very strong. And from barrier six, I just think Yoshi Noxious is going to get a much better run throughout the early stages. And then again, the 1,400 metres I see is a positive. So I think can really play a part. And it's the biggest threat here to the favourites at number six, let it slip. There's been a little bit of talk as well around for number five, Lyndon Mavanes for Fred Kersley. Douglas White's ride. Now, this horse, it's making its debut in a group three over 1,400 metres. The recent trial was really good. One by one and a half lengths. Douglas White taking the ride in barrier two. A lot of positives. I found it hard to put it on top and to 
support it confidently here first up in a group three race but there is a lot of hype about this talk and as i mentioned a lot of punters seem to be very keen on it let's take a look at the selections i'm going to be tipping number six let it slip from number three yoshi noxious number two push and shapes also from the dan pierce stable and number four remember berlin Race number three, it's Australia race number six for our Singapore viewers. It's over the 1,600 metres and a really good race to analyse here with a lot of early speed but also a lot of strong potential bat markers in this race and a few coming from the same form lines as well, a 1,500 metre race at Ascot. That is the replay that we're going to take a look at because Tales of Summer was an impressive winner on that occasion. Conditions did suit, so take note of that. But let's have a look and see how Towers of Summer got the job done. Joey Tom Taylor, Thunderclap Newman down on the rail. Here comes Esprit Hero with its run. But Tiger Red at the 250 lead. Tales of Summer closing the margin. Two lengths, Zoe Tom Taylor. Highly secret further back with our finest moment running on. Tiger Red, Tales of Summer. There together. Tales of Summer, Tiger Red. Tales of Summer, Tiger Red from our finest moment. Tales of Summer. It was a really good performance by the Simon Miller trained galloper. Obviously had to cross from barrier 13, but has that natural pattern anyway. So there was a lot of horses that did want to go forward because we learned pretty early on that race day that it was going to suit looters, which uh, really played into the part of Towers of Summer. And also Tiger Red, which put the pressure on this galloper throughout. Now conditions should go the other way for uh, Saturday at Ascot. And I think bat markers will really play a part. So the early speed could fall into a favour, like a horse like number 10, our finest moments, which was still able to finish third, only a short neck behind Tales of Summer. Now drawn wide again, 55 kilos with Joey as a party. I think this horse is going to improve dramatically again and will be too strong over the 1,600 metres. Should be able to sit back and run on with that turn of foot. And I was really impressed with that last start performance, only finishing a short neck behind Tales of Summer. Another horse that I think it will suit is number seven, Tarquin Shadow. Now Damien Oliver takes a ride, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, Lucy Warwick suspended. This horse ran on from 13th to only finished two and a half lengths behind Tales of Summer on a day that didn't suit as well. We conditioned suiting the 55 and a half kilos, Damien Oliver on board as well. I think Tarquin Shadow can certainly play a part in this race and she will be right up there in betting as well for the Brett Pope stable. Outside of that, taking a look at some of the, the leaders, Tales of Summer, certainly a horse that you have to acknowledge, and number eight, Tiger Red as well. I think they can find the lead like they did in that last start, and they can certainly set the tempo in this race. Let's take a look at the selections. I'm going to be tipping number 10, Our Finest Moment. From number seven, Tarquin Shadow, number three, Tales of Summer, and number 11, Liberty Rise, where conditions will also suit the way that it runs. Race number four, it's Australia. Race number eight for our Singapore viewers. Another really good field here with the likes of Sujay coming out of a winter bottom. Hobart Jones, which is in really good form, was a winner last start. And even horses like Crown Choice and Little Shadow, which are probably in their career best form at the moment as well. The replay that we're going to take a look at is Hobart Jones, was given a perfect ride by Lucy Warwick last start. We'll take a look at that run now. Our Brucey bonus, Beach Express, followed by Tiger Peak, Mississippi, and still well back at the 250 full clip tackle by Folds Bet Malibu style. Hobart Jones, Tudor Bolt, getting a beautiful run along the rail, though, goes through with them. It's Hobart Jones out near the middle. On the inside, Tudor Bolt, Tiger Peak flying. Hobart Jones draws clear. Hobart Jones. He's a lot of potential, this Galloper, and we saw it on that occasion as well. Like in the previous race, Damien Oliver will replace Lucy Warwick, so there's plenty of positives to have there as well. And this horse showed its class last night, beating Tudor Bolt by a length, and we now know that those form lines have held up as well. And I think Hobart Jones from barrier three with the 57.5 kilos over the 1,400 metres is really going to be hard to beat in this race. Vernon Brockman said post-race that this horse is still building into this campaign nicely. So if that performance is anything to base this campaign on, Hobart Jones should be winning some more races in this campaign. Another horse that I'm really keen on is number 11, Little Shadow. Now, conditions didn't suit last start of all. It was beaten four lengths by Tales of Summer. But you go to the start before that, only beaten a half length by Neverland, which, of course, is racing in the Group 1 Kingston Town a little bit later on in the card. Drops a kilo from that performance as well. So to be within a half length of Neverland and now drop weight as well from barrier one, a small concern there from the draw. But I think Little Shadow can go back. There's plenty of speed in this race. And I think the turn of foot will be too strong for this mare. And I think she can get the job done in a very good Saturday field as well and it's what Bernie Miller deserves he's been training uh, his gallopers very nicely at the moment the stable's going well I think Little Shadow can add to that form lines as well 
Number four, Flying Raw, was a little bit disappointing last start, beaten a length by Lenience, was in a perfect position to swoop at the top of the straight, even though it was a leader's day, just didn't make any uh, any gain at all down the straight, which was a little bit disappointing, but with the 53 and a half kilos, meets some gallopers like King of the Palace better in this race, and I just think from barrier 13, the horse will be forced to go back a little bit further than normal. We might be able to see the turn of foot that we know it's capable as well, and that lightweight should certainly suit. Let's take a look at selections then for race number four. I'm going to be tipping number 11, Little Shadow, from number three, Hobart Jones, number four, Flying Raw, and number eight, King of the Palace. Quick, quick.